fun too. The cause is really important. It's really needed. Oh, what's the cause? Tri-County Animal Shelter. Seeing these four dogs and cats is heartbreaking. Yeah. It's our Kappa Yearly Charity event and this year, are you ready? We're doing a garage sale. It's oh. gonna be huge! All the dogs are cleaning out their attics. We're getting really cool stuff. But we're gonna be doing the real work of selling them. <laughs> we wanted to ask you because you're the experts. Would you take charge and run the sale? Taylor's mom said that we could use her garage and driveway. Uh, sure. Whatever we can do. Are you sure? Yeah, happy to. Oh. <laughs> so all the moms want to get together and have a big organizational meeting. Just the moms. But they don't know anything about garage sales. You'll tear it, right? Okay. <laughs> Kappa, 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 no! <laughs> Logan's going to have to think about where he wants to go. Uh, we still got a couple of years. Not really. I want to set up some campus trips. Maybe can find something that's not out of state. <laughs> Oh, what a beauty. I had a car like this in college. I remember it well. That was a great car. <laughs> when it was running. 65 MG. Chrome bumpers, which had changed in 74. Wire rim wheels. It's fantastic. I will never understand how guys remember things like the differences in bumpers. When I was a kid, I could tell you what gear it was by its taillights. I knew I married you for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> What you looking at? Nothing. Man, when I saw that MG today, it really brought me back. Tell the truth, Jen. Is my uh, neck getting saggy? No. You're vintage like that car. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I do when I see a wrinkle I don't like? What? I turn out the lights. Does it work? Like a charm. Come here. <clears throat> <sighs> Are those wire wheels beautiful? It's all I can think about. <laughs> Night, honey. Night. Night, I love you. Love you too. How's it coming? Oh, fantastic, Tina. I know you hate these portraits, but it's money. Yeah, right. Oh, honey. Oh, your time is coming, hmm? I know it. I saw the letter from the bank. They're not gonna foreclose. No, not for 30 days. I'm talking to them about it. I will refinance. I gotta go to work. That's for a raise! You guys really saved us by organizing the garage sale. <laughs> Is there anything we can do to help you with the meeting? Oh, I think we're good. Are we good? We're good. So this meeting is just the moms and not the girls. <laughs> it is everything we could do to keep them away from the sale. They're way into this. You be warned. <laughs> <laughs> Abby, have I met your mother? I don't know. Her name's Sydney. Stepmom. Parents divorced. Dad remarried. Not very cool. I'm sorry. It happens. 
And she tries. Like, at this garage sale, for instance. How so? Nothing really, just wanting to be a part of everything. Well, we've got to run, but I wanted to give you a heads up about tonight. Okay. See you later. See you later. Thanks. Bye, Anna. Bye, Abby. Ooh. Oops. I forgot I can't make it tonight. What? Ah, I'm taking a vibrational cooking class at the college extension. Vibrational cooking? Yeah. There's live food and there's dead food, and live food has a higher vibrational frequency. Good to know. <laughs> okay, okay. But here's the secret to a successful garage sale. Do not put prices on your items. What? That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> there has to be price tags. How do we know what to charge? Yeah. You ask the customer to name their Is price. Is that how they do it? I, I, don't, I don't think that's how it's done. I mean, have you heard of that My before? neighbor had a garage no, sale. I, yeah. I don't know. Never heard of it. <laughs> ladies, ladies, raise your hand if you've ever put on a garage sale. Well, all right. This is why we've asked Jennifer to help, because she understands how it's done. I'm not going to negotiate like I'm in some third world bazaar. The girls Marcia. are doing the selling, Marsha, and I see you haggle with the best of them. Can you please tell us why you suggest not to put prices on the items? Because the sorority will make more money, and this is a fundraiser, right? There we go. Most of the time, people will offer more than you're asking, and they think that they are getting a great deal. They never pay the marked price anyway, so it saves on all the haggling. That makes more sense. Actually, that makes yeah. more money. Check. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, clean out your closets, your garages, bring everything you don't want. Uh, where are we staging this? Oh, my house. My husband's going to move all his cars, so we'll have plenty of room. Oh, great. Well, let's remember, this is for the girls. On the day of the sale, no moms. I'd feel better if we were there. You are such a helicopter. Let the girls do oh, it. They will be fine. There. I'm not. <laughs> Well, Sydney, that was a good meeting, I think. <laughs> I really appreciate you helping me with this. Oh, <laughs> no problem at all. I love doing it, and it's hard for me to say no to my daughter. Well, I think Abby would appreciate it if I wasn't so involved. I'm just getting to know Abby. Ah, she's got her dad wrapped around her finger, and I'm the stepmom. Oh, <laughs> okay. We're Again. Hey, Abby. We gotta go. We've got class. Okay, second. Um, I really need to come by the shop because I'm redecorating and I want to find a few unique oh, pieces. Oh, of course. Anytime. I would love to help. All right, but I think I'll wait until after the garage sale. Good idea. <laughs> I'm late. We're going to be late. Drive safely. You will. Live food. Living. Mmm. Delicious. I can feel the energy. Living food is the highest vibrational source. A healthy human is about 65 hertz. So, if we raise our vibration, bacteria, fungi, disease can't live. We become calm and happy, and negative thoughts disappear. Those are beautiful. Thank you. Wonderful. This is not good vibrations. What is this? Oh, it's a red cabbage caboche of a cantaloupe with a tangy pomegranate molasses dressing, all just picked. Do you feel lighter? No. Or clearer? No. Vibrationally too. Babe. Oh, where are you going? Oh, I have to meet with the Kappa moms. Oh, wish I could go. Oh, you are more than welcome to come. Have fun. Welcome to Rags to Riches. Can I help you with anything? Yeah. This was my grandmother's. Oh. Do you buy this kind of thing here? We do. Yeah, this is gold-plated sterling. Hmm. Is it worth a lot? It's more valuable than a complete set. A stray spoon would probably fetch about $40. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, I'll come back. Tina, are you sure you want to do this? It's just a garage sale. Yes, I want to spend time with my friend who I don't see enough. I've got an hour for lunch, so we should get going. Well, we can still go eat. Uh, no, no, let's just go explore. We've got a garage sale to fill. Hey, son. Hey. Isn't she a beaut? You know, Mom already talked to me about playing too many video games. Uh huh? So. You know, fine. I'll just go skateboarding. Get some exercise. Oh, this isn't about you. This is about me. I need to get back in shape. Can you pass me the nut and bolts, please? 
out. Yeah. You know, you're in pretty good shape for your age, Dad. I'm uh, gonna start running too. You ever thought about doing a 10K? No. no. We could do it together, kind of a father-son thing. I need the uh, ratchet as well, please. You know, my, my friend Zach's dad runs. Really? Yeah, he had to get a hip replacement. Huh. Yo, know, we can play some video games sometime. You know, just something age appropriate. Just let me know, okay? I will think about it. Look at that. <laughs> I'm telling you, those ladies. I really appreciate this. Are you kidding me? I'm just so glad to see you. So, wait, are we, are we not going to go and say hi to your mom? Oh, no, no, no. I think she's at Bridge Club. And if not, I'd be doing chores for an hour. She fired the handyman. Okay. I'll see her this weekend and get it done. Okay, got it. Upstairs. <laughs> well, if I wanted junk, I found it. Wow. Wow. <laughs> When's the last time you were up here? Years. Oh. Oh. Huh. Good for the garage sale? Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this. This is like real wicker. It's so cool. <gasps> Oh my goodness, I remember this. I had this when I was a kid. What? Really? <laughs> yeah. Well, here, look, you want to carry it down? No, yeah, let's just put everything to the middle and then I'll come back and get it later. I know you have to go. No, sorry. What about this painting? You know art. Oh, let me look. Um, yeah, no, 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 don't bother. <laughs> like, not even for a garage sale. It's like paint by numbers from a kit or something. <laughs> <clears throat> this, though, look, look, this could be worth something. It's got the old reel on it and everything. <laughs> Let's put it with the rest of the stuff. I'll huh? come back and get it. All right. So you're telling me that you found a 19th century Jasper Cropsey in an attic? I'm serious. I think it was the real deal. Do you know one of these went at auction for over $100,000? So what did she say when you told her? I didn't tell her. <laughs> you didn't tell her? I, I, I told her to leave it there, but I, I didn't tell her what it was. So what was your plan there? You're gonna like sneak in in the middle of the night and steal it? No. No! We could really use the money. I'm not a thief, so... Right, right. So, no. Okay, I... so... Why didn't you tell her then, huh? I don't huh? know, I don't know. It does seem like it would solve all our problems, you know? Well, it would, right? I mean, this uh, very valuable painting that nobody knows about and with your auction house connections. You could sell it to a secret buyer and then... And then when you got caught, then I could, you know, come and visit you in prison. I'd make you a plastic toothbrush shank. <laughs> make it in a little cake for me? Yeah, you'd Would look you like an orange. from Abby. She's really upset. Her stepmom didn't come home last night. Did they call the police? They did. And the police said they have to wait 24 hours before they can file a missing persons report. Oh. Does anybody know where she was going? Abby said she was going to have lunch with an old friend and then she was going back home to get stuff for the sale. Maybe an accident? They're calling the hospitals. How can we help? This is a list of all the other moms, other friends of Sydney's. That's their phone numbers. We'll start making calls right now. Does she have any medical issues, like blackouts or anything like that? I don't know. Oh, the friend she was having lunch with is on the list, Tina Parsons. She's not one of the moms. Most missing people turn up unharmed within 24 hours. Frank. All right, all right, I'll check.
check your license plate, see if her car got in an accident or maybe got towed somewhere. Oh, it's Danny. Hey, Danny, what's up? I'm here with Detective Linwood. Oh, can you text me that address? Thanks. Someone thinks she might have gone to her mom's. I'm going to check it out. Call me if anything turns up on her car. Okay. I'm Jen. Hi. Well, come on in. Oh, don't worry about Prince. He's very friendly. He's a good watchdog, though. Come. Thank you. Raymond, her husband, called me last night. They still haven't heard anything from her? I'm afraid not. He doesn't like her. Someone said she might have gone to your storage attic. Storage attic? If she were here, she would have come to say hello. Do you mind if I go out there and take a look? Well, go ahead. It's right there above the workshop. You see? Police detective, and I don't stumble across as many dead bodies as you. Remind me not to get on your bad side. It doesn't look like a murder. Oh, well, that's a first. Touch anything? The light switch. All right. Oh, used to be a head injury. Maybe she tripped over this object and fell and hit her head. On? Um, that pipe? Yeah, seems like blood. Right where she would have struck her head if she had fallen. Anything else? Seems like she was holding her cell phone when she fell. That's not unusual. Let's just let these guys do their job. All right. First glance, seems like an accident. Deceased is rigor, probably around 12 hours. Just leave everything to the ME. I'll attach a note to your report. Thanks, Lieutenant. Yeah. Jennifer? Hey. Now I gotta break the news to Mrs. Mellon. I hate this. Do you want me to go with you? Yes, please. We had planned to just have lunch, but Sydney just wanted to look for some stuff in her mom's attic, so we just came over for an hour. And we found some stuff, and we just put it aside for her to come back later. I know she took some stuff from our garage. It must have been right before she went back. Did she say anything to you, honey? No, Dad. She didn't know I was at school. I spoke to her in the afternoon. She came by the house when we were bringing the garage sale items. Did you talk to her, Jennifer? It was so hectic. I saw her, but we didn't talk. She said she was going to get some other stuff and then come back to her. Just so normal. And then she walked out and smiled.
You okay? I can't believe I was just with one of my oldest friends and now she's dead. Sorry, babe. I mean, how does someone just trip on something and, and, and wind up dead? I don't know. Aren't you glad you can go back and take that painting now? <sighs> can't even imagine. So, I told Abby what you were telling me, and I thought she should talk with you. <laughs> it's probably pretty dumb. It's not. I feel weird talking about this, but it's really been bothering me. It's okay, Abby. Tell her what you were telling me. My stepmother was a dancer her whole life. She took classes twice a week, so she was good on her feet. I just don't see how she, like, stumbles or trips or whatever. It's her head and just eyes. Well, that seems to be what happened. They gave us her personal effects, and I looked at her phone. It was asleep, so I woke it up, and it seems like she was trying to make a call. She fell, but she only dialed one number, nine. Was she trying to dial 911? Why? She could have been conscious after she fell. Was she trying to get medical help? No, that's not right. The phone ended up four feet away from her. If she had been conscious after the fall, the phone would have still been in her hand. She tried to make this call before she fell. I'm just happy that we can have a lunch without a murder to discuss. It is nice. It's a social lunch. Right. A no murder lunch. <laughs> Oh, so how's Jason? Oh, he's good. He's got a big birthday coming up. Oh, wow. I do something fun. All right. Happy year. Let me ask you a question about Sydney Wenton. Uh, here we go. The medical examiner ruled it an accidental death. Did he estimate the time of death? Humor me. Sometime around 10.30 p.m., give or take. Sydney's stepdaughter, Abby looked at Sydney's phone. Sydney attempted to make a phone call at 10.24 p.m., but she only dialed one number, a nine. Okay, she fell and hit her head, remained conscious long enough to dial 911, passed out before she could finish. Then the phone would have been in her hand or nearby. Let's assume she was trying to dial 911. Because a killer has... was waiting for her. Waiting for her to come up to the attic and whack her in the head? I know, I know. And the blood on the pipe? No, that too. My professional opinion? Here's the likely scenario. She was calling someone on her phone. As she was about to hit the first number, she trips, presses the nine by mistake, falls, hits her head. So she didn't intend to dial the nine. She meant to hit a five or a four instead. Yeah, or another number. Hey, uh, oh, this is my treat, okay? Only because it's a social lunch. And it's a social lunch because we have no crying to talk about. Right? Right. Can I cry? Yeah, I'm gonna have the grilled cheese special. Love it. How was your cooking class last night? <laughs> oh, we got our final assigned dinner for six with a high vibrational menu. That sounds exciting. It is. Except I can't see fitting six people around my kitchen table. You could have the party at my house. You couldn't do that. Oh, it'd be fun. Okay, I was thinking Frank and Susan Linwood and you and Jason and Hannah and Logan. What China? The Norintaki. Oh, perfect. what happened in that attic. Now, supposedly, Sydney was on her cell phone and distracted. Uh, she trips, falls, hits her head on a pipe. The impact is so strong, it flips her over and she lands on her back. Can you help me for one second? Don't move. Um, here, take this deck of cards. 
Pretend this deck of cards is a cell phone. I want you to, uh, you stand right there. I'm gonna use this as the doorstop. I want you to pretend you're on your cell phone, you're distracted, you trip over the doorstep, and you fall onto the cushions. Seriously? Yeah, I'm getting too old to do my own stunts. Okay. Okay. I feel really stupid. Oh. Oh. You okay? Oh. Only hurt my dignity. Hmm. What did you learn? I'll get back to you on that. Mom. I love your mind. I do. Is that a compliment? <laughs> Definitively. <laughs> I will be your Watson anytime you want. Can I go back to bed now? Oh, yes, of course. Please go back to bed. Thank you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> Interesting. Asphyxia due to cerebellar hemorrhage completed at um, 10.46 a.m. on Wednesday. You brought coffee. Oh, not just any coffee, my friend. Caramel macchiato, your favorite. Mmm. Oh, did you hear about the chickpea farmer who died at dinner? The coroner is ruling it a homicide. Huh? It's a homicide. Oh, this crowd is... Oh, boy. So, you have come here to ask me about Sidney Wenton. What do you think? Accidental death. She fell down, hit her head. It happens more often than you would think. Okay, but when someone trips and goes down, their arm automatically shoots out in front of them to break their fall, right? That is correct. Instinctual movement. And therefore, Sidney's arm would have hit the pipe protecting her head. Well, usually, but in my business... Uh, Take a look at this. Do I have to? He fell off the fourth floor balcony. He looks better than me. My point is that my business usually is proven wrong every day. In the case of Sydney Wenton, pipe matches the indentation in her skull. Her momentum was sufficient for a fatal injury. Accidental death. Thank you and good night. This is it. A car like this in college. Same color, same year. I got a birthday coming up. I should give myself a little present. May I? Please. Oh, it's a little tighter than I remember. How much? Ten thousand dollars. That's more than it cost when it's brand new. For an investment? Yeah. Logan, hypothetically, how much time should a teenager devote to a video game? As long as it takes to get to level six, but I just crashed and burned, actually. Oh, that's my fault? No, no, I normally can't get past that spot anyway, so. Hey, what's going on with Dad? He's getting kind of weird. What do you mean? Is he having like a midlife crisis or something? I mean, he put a gym in the garage, and he said that he wants to start running 10Ks. Well, he's got a big birthday coming up. It's only normal to worry about getting older. I think he's being silly. Yeah. And I definitely don't want to start running any 10Ks, so... I've got a plan. You want to help? What do you know about toy soldiers? You buy and you sell it. What would this be worth? Oh, well, they're in good condition. About $30 a piece. Hmm. Well, this is kind of odd, but Elizabeth Mellon, Sydney's mother, she claims she had a burglary in the house. The thief, supposedly, broke in and stole two toy soldiers. Well, she thinks they're worth five grand a piece. Is that even possible? Well, it's possible. Certain rare pieces can go for a lot of money. When did this happen? 
She's not sure. Don't you find it strange that this happened in the same house where Sydney had her accident? I do. Can you meet me out there later? I'd like you to look at these toy soldiers, because if they are worth that much, it's a felony. Sydney loved these little toys. They were her father's when he was a boy. They were so special to her. I was reminiscing and I noticed that two were missing. The Washington and the George Cornwallis. They're very valuable to me. I want them back. These are lineal, very collectible. Do you have any information on the missing pieces? How old they are, so on and so forth? Richard, my late husband, documented everything. All of our artwork, all of our valuables. Um, um, there, those two. These are rare. You think someone broke in while you were here? I know who it was. It was Sam Briscoe. He was my handyman. I'm sure he was the one who broke in and took them. Why are you sure? Because Prince would devour any stranger who came in this house. But he knew Sam and caught him giving him treats. The door in the kitchen doesn't lock properly. I asked Sam to fix it. He didn't. So did you fire him? Yes. He was always looking at the paintings. Oh, who's the artist? Or how old is this? We used to rotate the paintings in the house with the ones in storage in the attic. Sam knew what we had up there. Do you have his current address? No. No, I don't. So some of the paintings are in the house, but some are stored. That's right. Next door in the... in the attic. Elizabeth thinks that Sam knew she had valuables in the attic. You didn't say anything about valuables when you were up there. No, oh, I was a little distracted by the dead body on the floor. What if Sam was in the attic stealing something and Sidney discovered him? Jen, everyone but you thinks her death was an accident. I mean, people do have accidents. I know, but when Abby came to me with her doubts, it got me thinking. Okay, I can help. Tonight's my cooking class. Why don't you come with me? It'll be really, really fun, and it'll take your mind off things. Oh, thanks, but no, I get enough vibrational cooking from my microwave. <laughs> hey, Gina. I haven't been here before. You have a really wonderful shop. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I, I need to come back when I can really browse. Listen, Jen, do you maybe have time to grab a cup of coffee or something? I just can't seem to shake it, you know? I uh, told her I had to go back to work. Maybe if I would have just stayed and helped her, then Sydney wouldn't have gone back, and she might still be alive. You can't blame yourself for this, Tina. <sighs> I heard about the handyman. Is it possible that he was in the attic when Sydney went back? Did he? Oh, anything's possible. Detective Linwood's gonna talk to him. As of now, all we know is that Elizabeth is missing some toy soldiers from her front room, and she thinks that her handyman Briscoe took them. Really? I mean, all I saw was junk in the attic. What does Elizabeth think is out there? Well, she said some artwork. There's a binder that has everything documented. But even if something's missing, who knows when it was taken? Could have been years ago. I guess it doesn't make a difference either way, does it? Sydney's not coming back. Well, it makes a difference if it wasn't an accident. That means someone is getting away with murder. to be working outside, huh? Well, what can you do? Lieutenant Frank Linwood. Mind if I have a word with you? I just got this job. Won't look too good if police are out here. Would it be okay if I met somewhere else? Look, there's a coffee shop over on Elm Street. Can I meet you there? When? I could take a break in an hour. I need this job. All right, I'll see you then.
It's only been a few minutes, Sam. Coffee shop is in the other direction. All I wanted to do was have a little conversation and you're running from me? Why? Nothing good ever happened whenever I had a conversation with a cop. Mm. Am I under arrest? Not yet. You want to be? Come on. I'm going to show you something. Let's go. I want you all to live what I'm teaching. You know, there's an energy shift happening across the entire planet. I feel that. It's like what we put out, we get back. Exactly. Exactly. So what fruits have the highest vibrations? Raw fruit. Ideally picked right from the tree. You eat nothing but raw fruit for three days, then see how you feel. Do you think it's a good idea to give the final dinner party for people who eat unconsciously? These people eat processed, refined food, no nutritional value packed full of white flour, preservatives, and chemicals. It's kind of them. Perfect. They're gonna love it. It'll be like they've never eaten before. You were on your way to health, happiness, and prosperity, Danny. You've got the glow. When do you play? Oh, well, I'm... Don't. <sighs> but I mean, I'd like to learn. I borrowed these clubs from Matt. You never uh, said a word about wanting to play golf before? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, you start talking about those 10Ks and, you know, <sighs> it, it got me thinking that you know, maybe you and I should have some sort of father and son activity. I was thinking something a little more physical, like playing hoops. Matt plays golf with his granddad, so. His granddad, really? <laughs> Come on, it's relaxing. I mean, nobody gets hurt, right? You sure about that? <laughs> what happened to the diet? What diet? I just wanted to drop a few pounds. I'll work out harder. Your son was playing golf. Hmm. I wonder why. He thinks I'm getting older and uh, he wanted to find some kind of activity we could do together. Well, have you ever thought about playing golf? No. Thought about mountain climbing or a dire man or playing an immense basketball league. Oh, I hear they have a senior league at the Y. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. Just kidding. Mm. Honey, look at you. If you're getting old, what does that make me? We are not getting old. You know, I think. I think we're exactly the same as we were in college. We are. Hey, didn't hear you come in. Hey, you know, I was just bringing the mail. Why are you looking at Cropsey paintings online? How long until they foreclose? Three weeks. Three weeks. Yeah. So where are we going to go? 
I don't know. Uh, we get an apartment. Find some place smaller. How's that gonna work? I mean, how, how am I gonna paint in some little apartment? How are we gonna fit our life into some little apartment? I thought you were gonna talk to your connections and see about working out a show for me. I, I tried. I mean, I'm in the restoration department. I'm, I'm not important. Can't push it. They love your work. You're so good. If I have to paint another businessman in a pinstripe soup, just, just killing me. I know. I know. Believe me, I know. We just have to hang in. My luck is gonna change. Maybe it already has. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Well, not to be insensitive, but your friend, Sydney, is dead. You know, there's nothing you're going to be able to do to bring her back, but that painting is still sitting there. We could, we could go get it. No, no, no. I'm sorry. It even crossed my mind. Nobody even knows about it. Sydney's mother has an inventory of everything. And if we quietly went and got it, we could be in the, in the south of Spain within a month. No, come on, Andrew. No, we're gonna be fine. Okay, I promise. Is this house? Yeah, I used to work here. I left it. Uh, left or fired? Mutual. Miss Mellon's paranoid, always accusing me of stuff. And she has a vicious dog. Oh. Fight someone someday. Yeah, thanks for the heads up. I, I don't like aggressive dogs. Uh, be careful with this one. You went after me one day. Hey, uh, you ever been out to the workshop? Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> I was a handyman. Tools and things are kept back there. Miss Mellon would sometimes have me move things around. Mm -hmm. She has a hard time keeping staff. All right. Well, Mrs. Mellon doesn't wish to see you. I want to show you something. Come on. See anything missing here? <laughs> How would I know? Well, the back door doesn't lock properly. Must have happened after I left. I don't leave things broken. Right. Jennifer, can you join us, please? You keep a hold of him. Let him go. Sam, that's not a normal dog. It's a lie detection dog. You're under arrest for burglary. Oh, you can see the energy coming off this guy. He eats nothing but raw food. He doesn't cook? Well, no, I mean, you can cook, but only a little, because he actually kills the food. So this dinner party you're having is going to be raw? It's going to be wonderful. Hey. Oh, hi, Tina. Hi. Andrew, this is uh, Danny and Jen. They hi. own this wonderful store. Oh, Tina right. tells me you're an artist. Oh, well, I'm working at it. Oh, stop. <laughs> He's very talented. Well, you're, you're kind of uh, biased. Well. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of stuff do you do? Uh, I'm a painter. Abstract expressionism, you can call it, I guess. We really should see it. I mean, we're trying to put together a gallery show. Oh, well, we'll be there. Ah, great. <laughs> hey, hey, listen, I heard that the, the handyman got arrested. Oh, yes, he's in jail. Had a couple of old warrants, assault, petty theft. Linwood's trying to connect him to the thefts at Mrs. Mellon's house. So could he have been there the night of Sydney's death? Maybe. He's got a pretty shaky alibi. Well, where did he say he was? At his apartment with his girlfriend alone. Remember, Jen? Spring break? <laughs> Stayed at your parents' house? Oh, you went home for spring break? What a concept. <laughs> I had that amazing blue MG sports car. Oh. And we went on that date. Except we never make it to the movies. We went to that <laughs> great spot up overlooking Taylor Lake. So pretty. Oh, yeah. Lover's Lane. Yeah, so there. <sighs> anyway, um... We had a wonderful time just talking, Hannah. <laughs> and then we're gonna go home. The car wouldn't start. Remember? You had to call your dad to come rescue oh. us. Oh. Was not fun. Wait, no, there's something fishy about that story. Really? 
There was no cell phones back then. No, they were called pay phones. And we had to walk half a mile to find one. <laughs> one grandpa say when he had to drive down there. I'd rather not say. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, um, I'd like to put something out on the table here. We all know my birthday is coming up soon. And I don't want to party. I don't want any gifts. If you want to make me happy, let's just ignore it. Okay, honey. Sure, Dad. No problem. Good. <laughs> Good. Hey, Dad. You know how you've given me all that advice over the years? Can I give you some? Sure, go ahead. When someone goes through a lot of trouble to get you something really, really cool, and they put in a lot of effort and a lot of planning. Get it. I figured your mother was up to something. So when you were playing golf the other day, she was behind that, right? She thinks I'm getting old. She's getting the golf clubs. <sighs> Look, just whatever she gets you, be very, very happy, okay? Of course. I didn't steal anything from that house. I'm falsely accused. Oh, well, first time I've heard that. These warrants you got me on. Petty theft. You're in jail because you skipped a court date. And, uh, and a soul charge. That gardener. Mm -hmm. That was self-defense. He swung first. But you skipped that court date, too. But that's not what I'm interested in. Breaking into a house when the owner is home is a felony. And grand theft, there's a lot of valuables in that house. In the attic, too. I've been up there a bunch of times. There's nothing but junk. Let's talk about March 5th in the evening. The judge won't give us a search warrant because we don't have any actual evidence that he committed the robbery. Aside from the dog's testimony. I've been looking online for the stolen toy soldiers, but nothing's turned up. Well, Briscoe still maintains he didn't rob the house and that he knows nothing about anything of value in the attic. What about Sydney's death? Aside from your feeling, why isn't this anything more than a tragic accident? Abby, Sydney's stepdaughter, came to me and told me that Sydney was strong and agile. She was a dancer. What's your point? Well, an athlete like a dancer doesn't just fall. They have good balance and body control. And a dancer isn't gonna fall head first and not do anything to protect themselves or break their fall. Look, I had Hannah pretend she was talking on a cell phone and fall into some cushions. The minute she fell, her hand naturally went out in front of her to break her fall. So why didn't Sydney's? It was that nine she dialed that got me thinking. Mm -hmm. I know, it was probably a mistake. Mm -hmm. How long will Briscoe be in jail? He could easily be in there 30 days for skipping his previous warrants. wasn't too hard. Kind of scary what's online, so you got his address. Now what? Well, I'm gonna go talk to his girlfriend and see if she has any valuable toy soldiers to sell. I don't like that. Oh, she's not a criminal. I'm just gonna chat with her. <laughs> How do you know? You go, I'm going with you. But she might get intimidated if it's two of us. So I'll wait in the car. All right, suit yourself there, Watson. Hi. What do you want? Well, my name is Jennifer Shannon. I own an antique store. 
I heard that Sam might have some items he'd like to sell. I don't know what you're talking about. In my business, discretion is very important. I brought cash. Come on in. Junk. I need to get away from them. Police are asking all these questions about where he was, what he did, all over some things they think he stole. What do you think? I think I don't want to be around when he gets out. God, I always end up with such losers. If you have anything that you think would be right for my shop, I'd be interested. Is really worth two hundred dollars? At least. <laughs> My life's a mess. I asked him if they were stolen, and he said no. I knew better. Peggy, I don't want to buy these. I want you to give these to me so I can return them to their proper owner. No, I really need the money. I know that you do, but if you give these back because it's the right thing to do, you'll save yourself a lot of trouble. I don't want any more trouble. I would like to buy this. It's junk. It's worth nothing. Actually, I think it's worth two hundred dollars. Please, so Frank. Briscoe's girlfriend wants to return the stolen property. You went to see it? Yeah. She feels badly about the theft. She doesn't want anything to do with Briscoe. Sounds like an accomplice to me. Frank, she returned everything. I, I don't think she was involved. Please, can you just trust me on this one? Okay. Okay, yeah, she's a, an upstanding citizen and returned stolen property. It could have been dangerous, you know that. Oh, I had Danny waiting outside in the car. Oh, oh, wow, well, she's so much better now. Uh, love them both for the melon case. Frank, for what it's worth, Briska wasn't with Peggy the night that Sydney died. Mm. She remembers because it was her birthday. He came home late, and he had been drinking. Okay, good. Now you can start solving burglaries instead of murders. Step in the right direction. We're all on call Saturday for Danny's dinner party. Honey, hold still. I'll be done in a sec. Mom, she's got some strange eating habits, okay? I'm scared. No, we all love Danny, but I've had her smoothies. We're gonna eat her food and tell her it's wonderful. I fit pretty good off the rack. I know you don't want to celebrate your birthday, but you do need a new sport coat. What kind of cooking is it? French? Italian? Vibrational. Different foods have higher and lower vibrations. <laughs> so you're wearing coats tighter these days. I'll be down a few pounds by my birthday, so. On your ice cream diet? <laughs> <laughs> I was just beginning to accept my stepmother's death was an accident. And then they arrest the handyman? And now I'm back to square one. Could he have something to do with her death? Did you know Sam Briscoe? Yes. I saw him when I went to my grandmother's. I didn't like him. Why? I don't know. It was creepy. If he killed her, why? Your grandmother said there were some valuables in the attic. Sam might have known about them. So he's up in the attic. When Sydney shows up, she catches him in the act and he kills her? That's just a wild idea, okay? Just a possibility. Miss Shannon, I really appreciate you helping me try to figure this out. I miss her. I'm upset that she's gone. I mean, I knew she loved me, but I didn't think that I loved her. I blamed her for my parents' divorce. But it wasn't her fault. And she tried. She really tried. I'm happy. It's okay. I didn't know I cared so much. It's okay. Jen? Hey, hon. 
I uh, forgot my lunch. Gotta get my protein and veg. So, we have a motive, robbery. Sam broke into the main house, stole the toy soldiers. Sometime later, he returns to hit the storage attic. Sydney shows up, finds him there, wrong place, wrong time. Well, what was in the attic that's worth killing over? We don't know. Elizabeth is doing inventory on all her artwork. Okay, so let me get this straight. Sydney and Tina go there together in the afternoon. And then Sydney goes back by herself that evening? Right. What if Sydney stayed in the attic? What mm -hmm. if Tina killed her? Uh -huh. I thought about that, but it doesn't work because I saw Sydney later that afternoon after she dropped Tina off at work. Oh. Oh, that's a head scratcher. Mm -hmm. Anyway, would you like to share what we will be eating at your vibrational dinner party tonight? No, that's a surprise, but... We will all feel lighter Ooh. and healthier mm. and more attuned when we are finished eating. Attuned? Like, like a, a piano. piano. <laughs> You're so cute when you say that. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, hey, Jen. Oh, hi, Tina. Hey, did the police get that warrant? Not exactly, but they did recover the stolen toy soldiers. Was it the handyman, Briscoe? Uh, possibly. They're trying to connect him to the attic. Elizabeth thinks she might have had some valuable paintings up there. She's not sure? Not yet. But they're looking through everything. If something's been taken, they'll know. Yeah. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm just late for work. Thank you for the update. These are really nice. The diamond earrings and the tennis bracelets. The stuff I just don't wear anymore. And how much are you going to get for it? Well, I don't know, but I hope a lot. I'm going to see Callie at tomorrow. She's going to give me an appraisal. And then a check. Well, she owes us. Remember? We gave her that deal on that shaker hut she wanted. Oh, good point. I'll remind her. Your husband is a very lucky man. I keep telling him that. This is a mm. sliced Brussels sprout with tahini garlic drizzle. Oh. Mm. <laughs> That's, um, good. Oh, yeah? Mmm, amazing. Is it? Mm hmm Okay. Uh, it's very... Mm. Yeah. Mm. Jason? It's very interesting. Mm-hmm. Oh, you don't like it? No, no. No, it's, uh, it sticks a little bit used to it. Uh-huh. Right. Jen? Wow. Mm. Oh, it's really... Raw, <laughs> but yummy. Oh, good, okay. Now, the main entree. You will need your forks. So this is the main forks. Okay. Mm -hmm. Super high vibrational. That looks good. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You start with a nice eggplant base. It's not cooked? A, a little, it's as live as it can be. Ginger. Yeah, ginger. And basil. <laughs> Wow. Um, <laughs> colorful. Uh huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bon appetit. So good. Mmm. Now oh, you guys hate it. Mm. Hate is such a strong word. It really is. Yeah. I think I feel the vibrations. Hey, Logan, can you get that? Yeah, sure. You know, it's okay that you don't like it. To pass the class, all I had to do was have the dinner party and you had to taste the food, so. Good. I figure mission accomplished. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hey, great. great. Hey, look. Oh, oh. Looks like the calories here. Oh, pizza. Those hey, are backup. What do you think the vibrational content of a slice of this double cheese veggie extravaganza is? I wouldn't know, Jen. Hmm? I. Mm, very <laughs> I know. <laughs> These meant so much to Sydney. I'm just so glad they're back. Thank you. Did you complete the inventory of the artwork? Was there anything else missing? Yes, actually there was a painting. Come, I'll show you. 
It was from my husband's family. You have no record of where it's supposed to be stored? No, things got moved around. Do you mind if I go back to the attic and take a look? Certainly, go ahead. Elizabeth did an inventory of all the paintings in the binder. One of them was missing. What you're looking at is an outline left in the dust after it was taken. What painting's missing? Uh, it's a 19th century landscape by an artist named Jasper Cropsey. What's it worth? A hundred thousand dollars. A hundred thousand. The size of the dust imprint matches the dimensions of the frame. The Cropsey was in the attic, Frank, and someone took it. Yeah, but that could have happened a day or a week before Sydney even got up there. All right. What's your theory? Sam Briscoe could have known about the painting. He previously robbed the house and got away with it. So maybe he went back for the painting. Sidney caught him in the act, and he hit her with a pipe to try to get away. Uh, hold on, hold on. Hit her with a pipe on the head? Uh, so how did the blood get on the other pipe attached to the wall? He put it there. And then he moved the doorstop to make it look like she tripped. There are a bunch of pipes on the other side of the attic. One of them could easily have been the weapon. So now, it's burglary with the resident at home. It's a special circumstance. It's minimum six years. Maybe I get a year. Well, adding murder changes everything. Oh, no, that isn't going to happen. I didn't kill anybody, I didn't see anyone. Yeah, I took some toy soldiers, big deal. You're not gonna pin a murder on me. Hey, you can't do this to me. I didn't do it. Get him out of here. I'm innocent, I didn't do it. What looks good today? The MG, the Robin Egg Blue MG with the chrome bumpers. That's what looks good today. What, where is it? Bought, shipped, and gone. What? But we, we have a fantastic Ferrari 348. 65 MG. That's what I want. Have you ever driven a Ferrari? What about a Ferrari 360 Spider? Not an MG. Not like the one I had. We got a problem. Whenever Briscoe's alibi in the night of Sidney's death, he claims he was at a friend's house drinking, bought some things at the liquor store on his way over. But, so here's some security cam footage from the store that night. Now look at this. This is way over at Ridgeside Falls. It's 10.45 at night. So Briscoe couldn't have been in the attic with Sidney. 
Hi, this is Jennifer Shannon. I was wondering if you had time to meet for a quick cup of coffee. You're saying the painting was removed from the attic? Yes, and very recently. My guess is it was taken the night that Sidney died. The handyman? No, he has a solid alibi. I'm trying to put together a timeline. Do you remember when Sidney dropped you back at work? Tina? Why are you even rehashing this over and over? I mean, what are you, the police? Are you a family member? I mean, who made you the chief investigator in my friend's death? I'm sorry, I thought you would want to know. I'm sorry. It's just things have just gotten really stressful at work. You know, they cut back my hours and I have this balloon payment on my home loan. It just feels like everything's happening at one side. I just can't recreate that afternoon with Sydney again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I snapped at you. It's all right, Tina. It's just hard to take everything in, you know? So if the handyman didn't do it, then do they have any idea who might have? No. It's just traffic is crazy, so I, I thought maybe, you know, you should just uh, grab dinner there and, and come home later. Yeah, no, otherwise you're just gonna be sitting there like bumper to bumper, right? Yeah, okay, no, I'll see you later. Yeah, I love you too. actually from 1905. It's really in very good condition. Jen? Jen, it's Tina. I, I know about the Cropsey painting. Can, can you come over, please? I know. I don't know what to do. Does anyone else know? I don't know what to do. Danny? Mm -hmm. I just got a message from Tina about the painting. What about it? I'm not sure, but she wants me to go over there. She didn't say why? No. But my guess is she knows where it is. You said you were in the city. And I lied about that. We, we can just give the painting back. Okay? And if you killed Sydney, you, you didn't mean to, right? That's right. Okay. So it's not, it's not murder? It wasn't intentional? Doesn't matter. I can't spend a day in jail. I have a buyer for the painting, and I'm going to sell it, and then I'm going to disappear. Okay. 
Martin, then you go. You go and I won't tell anyone, please. Sorry. <laughs> Is Tina here? Yeah, she'll be, uh, she'll be right down. One and I'll show you some stuff I've been working on. Oh, thank you. I guess uh, Tina found out about that missing painting. Oh, uh, what did she find out? Well, the whole story. I guess somebody brought it into the auction house to try and sell it. So this is uh, this is the stuff that nobody wants to buy. <sighs> They're amazing. You're very talented. I mean, I don't know a lot about modern art, but I mean, these are powerful. Right. Here, well, here, check this out. I I think the composition is really. Yeah, that color red is the hardest thing to duplicate. What did you do with Tina? You killed Sydney. You want to see it? <sighs> see that? That is worth more money than I have made in my lifetime. And mine, well, mine are worthless. I didn't plan to kill anyone. No, you didn't. You just wanted the painting. Tina told you about it. And all you had to do was sneak in the attic and take something that no one would ever miss. You worked in the dark. Probably with a flashlight until you found it. Same size as the one you hit her with. And what if she fell and hit her head? Why would she fall? She tripped. And now for the last touch, that would make it perfect. Blood on the wall pipe. But 
you're an artist. So you don't just rub it on. You carefully apply it as if someone hit their head when they fell. But now you have to get rid of the murder weapon. You can't take it with you. Why not hide it in plain sight? All that's left is for you to take the painting and get out. It's like you were actually there. You know what happens next? You said you wanted to see Tina. Don't make this any worse, Andrew. Oh, it couldn't get any worse. Come on. Come on, upstairs. Come on. Okay, all right. Just, just wait here. So you're going to be okay. I'm so sorry, Jen. It's okay. You had no way of knowing. What you did was really courageous. I'm not even going to try and explain this to Jason. You're on your own. So he never intended to kill Sidney? No. He thought he'd get in and out and no one would ever know. Uh, but he sure did intend to kill Tina, and you walked right into the middle of it. So do you think maybe perhaps it's time to hey, shut um, it down? Dad, look. Hmm. It's Elizabeth. Why are they here? Elizabeth wanted to come by and thank you in person. Amazing. You're a very lucky man. Your wife is tenacious and smart and very brave. And maybe a bit reckless. Maybe. I I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. What happened to my daughter should never have happened. But at least there's justice. I only wish Sydney were still here. It's gonna be hard, but, but Abby and I will get through this together. Frank, how is Tina? She's very lucky. But they expect a full recovery. Oh, that's good news. And I'd like to officially announce that Jen will be retiring from crime solving. Oh. Oh. Actually, I made that up. Oh, something to consider. Fine. I'll consider it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, that means she won't. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't help it if an interesting case comes through the door. <laughs> <laughs> she cannot. <laughs> Happy birthday, honey. <laughs> <laughs> No balloons, no party, no big deal, just like you wanted. Good, that is good. So why do I feel like you're up to something? Come on, make a wish, Dad. What'd you wish for? Golf clubs. Oh, they should be outside. Let's check it out. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, what? This? <laughs> This is this is the car. This is the car. This is my car. Yes. This was my car. This is the wait. You deserve it. This is my car. Yes. But <laughs> I don't. I don't know how much this cost? Well, I had my own little fundraiser. Hey, how about you take me for a drive? I think that's a great idea. <laughs> I love you. Happy birthday. <laughs> See? Who says we're getting old? Not me. 
I think that we are as good as we ever were. Me too. Well, I guess we should be getting home. Really? Okay. Just like your old car. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least we got a cell phone. Yes, we do. Yeah. I'll call Hannah. Hey, Hannah, it's Mom. Uh, we're having some car trouble. Would you mind picking us up? Where are you? Uh, we're at Taylor Lake. Oh, Lover's Lane. Oh, you are so busted. <clears throat> I'll see you in about half an hour. Okay, thank you. Maybe I should have called my dad. No, I think he's still mad about last time. <laughs>